In permaculture, we are always trying to mimic patterns already found in nature. If you look in nature, you'll see that under any tree or growth, it's not vacant soil. Instead, we have leaves, plant debris, fallen logs. They're everywhere. Dead logs like the one behind me here don't just contribute mycorrhiza and fungi back into the soil. They also contribute nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. The other thing that they do that is just so cool is that they provide a food source for insects and also mushrooms like to grow on many species of logs. Many permaculturists love to use logs in their understories in order to grow mushrooms and cultivate another crop. But when you think about it, those mushrooms and those insects that eat the log directly are then consumed by other critters in the food chain. So this log is actually contributing to the greater whole. Surface microbes that have been helping that log to decay are going to continue to break down as you put that, those logs or those wood chips on top of your soil around your fruiting trees. But if you remember from my compost video recently, I talked about how in most compost heaps, you really wanna strive for a good balance of two thirds carbon material to one third nitrogen. Well, when you introduce logs, that's a carbon item. And so what's gonna happen is those microbes are gonna start seeking nitrogen. A lot of people are hesitant to bury logs in their raised beds because they're worried that as those logs break down, they're gonna start sucking nitrogen that other growth seedlings transplants and crops really need. So I'm gonna show you how I maintain a balance so that I'm not taking up too much nitrogen from the soil for these logs to break down. And instead, we're actually adding microbes and more beneficial components to the soil rather than detracting. I am in our firewood chopping area. We are finally going through stumps that have been on the ground for about seven years and splitting them into logs. I know they're probably too well seasoned. In fact, they have started to rot. So we're salvaging the timber that we can, and that's going in the corn crib behind me. John here, this is my husband, was in the midst of, midst of cutting a lot of these logs, and he asked me a question. What'd you ask me? A uh, bunch of this was already clearly decaying and rotting on the inside and the inner part of the logs I was dealing with, and I thought, there's not going to be any use for firewood, but maybe you would find a use for it since it seems like it was composting. So because this was a black walnut tree that we had taken down that threatened to fall onto the barn, my greenhouse and our patio, I wanted to make sure and look into juglone. Some people pronounce it juglone. It is the allelopathic compound or the toxic compound that black walnut trees emit, which makes a lot of plants not be able to sprout or grow in their proximity. Black walnut trees can only grow beside juglone tolerant plants. So would I really want to use wood chips or mulch or rotting logs from a black walnut? It turns out you can. This being here for seven years and definitely soft enough that I can pierce it with a pitchfork, I'm going to feel comfortable enough to use this in my growing spaces, particularly in my fruit tree guilds. So let me show you what I'm doing. Do you want to be in the video anymore? I'm good. You good? Yeah. If you are familiar with the book, The Holistic Orchard by Michael Phillips, then you may be familiar with the concept of ramial wood chips. Ramial wood chips are wood chips that are made from ramial branches. These are gonna be branches that are traditionally about three or four feet in diameter, and they're larger chunks of wood chips. In his book, he recommends to put um, a quarter, so if you go around the tree and we're divided into four, one quarter of a section with ramial wood chips annually in the fall and every year to move to a new quarter so that you're constantly filling in the different quarters or pie pieces around the tree. Instead of doing that, I am using the broken down wood chips and I would prefer to do this rather than use Ramio wood chips because they're already heavily decayed. The, stat, the fact that they are already heavily decayed means that they are gonna use less nitrogen from the soil in order to break down. It's no secret 
that wood chips and straw make a great mulch and help to retain moisture. But the larger the pieces, the more moisture can be retained in the soil. There's a really cool study that took place in Oregon where they studied the moisture content in the soil around logs. And they found that because of the microbe activity from those logs, that soil was 25 times more moist than your average soil. So the bigger pieces are more porous and they're gonna be holding more water, thus keeping your soil more moist, which is gonna help your fruiting tree and your guild members. Okay, moving over here. One other thing that I do to make sure I'm not taking too much nitrogen from the soil is I'm keeping the tree exposed with green growth around a portion of the tree. So here we have lemon balm. This is one of my guild members that's still in existence this late in the season. At the time of filming this, it's the end of October in central New Jersey. And I also have some comfrey that's back on the other side of the trunk here. By maintaining green growth around the tree, we're not just covering it with a bunch of carbon, which again is gonna pull up nitrogen from the soil. We have our carbon in one section, but we still have plenty of green growth and vibrance and nitrogen on the top of the soil. So that is going to help immensely. Oh, and before I go, quick pro tip. If you have a mouse or vole problem in your growing space, add a log. A snake will be invited to take up residence and will help to fix that problem.